Through childhood's days were past and gone, more innocent no child could be. Though grace in every feature shone, her maiden heart was fancy free, a creature of starry skies, too lovely for the earth to keep. She died in the earliest womanhood, thus dies and leaves behind no trace. Edmund Goss, a well-known English critic, is forced to review some books by the editor of The Examiner. He is tired of reading clichés and is worried about the decline in quality of writing in Europe. He decides to have a look at one last book. The book looks shabby and unattractive. It does not have an introduction or even a preface. He opens the book at random. The first poem he comes across is a translation from Victor Hugo's poetry. As he goes on reading, he realizes it's not at all the work of a novice. How could a young girl possibly write anything like that? Absurd may be the daylighter. Ill suited to the marching times, I loved the lips from which it fell, so let it stand among my rhymes. Torudot is the mother of Indo-Western literature. She is the one who started writing in English in India, and she is the only Indian woman writer who has written a full novel in French. It's not only because she was the first to do these, but these, all these works have literary qualities which should have received attention. Unfortunately, they have not received the kind of attention that we should pay to them. Born on March 4th, 1856 in an aristocrat Bengali family, Toru was the youngest of the three children. Sister Oru and brother Obju were elder to her. Her father, her uncles, uh, everyone was a scholarly person and also who were very, very open-minded and exposed to what was called modernism at that time. And also what reason could be that uh, Toru's father converted to Christianity when she was five years old. Kshetra Monidat did follow her husband, but not willingly. And there was a lot of uh, frustration, there was a lot of uh, discussions in the family, because uh, initially the mother could not reconcile herself to leaving Hinduism. Obju, the eldest among the three children, died of TB when Toru was just nine years old. Little Toru found solace in studies and literary pursuits. She not only read the Paradise Lost, but she could recite the whole chapters by heart. She had a phenomenal memory. Toru's father, Govind Chandardat, was a constant companion in her literary activities. I should say that she really cherished the relationship and she considered and thought of uh, that relationship as a major source of strength. Angel of the day, our hope, love's day. The countenance lights land and sea eternally. Thy name is France or Verity. Finally, the turning point in Toru's life came when in November 1869, the family moved to Europe where they first settled in Nice, south of France. Both the girls attended school for the first time and Toru learned French in just three months. She developed great love for the French culture, French language and French literature. There are very few Indians, not only in the past but even in the present, uh, who have really uh, 
created something who have written something in french who have gone and lived in france and the interaction between indian culture and french culture and reinterpretation of both the cultures is uh, not found uh, in many writers or in many works of art and therefore the french connection of torudad has a special place the dutt family traveled to paris and normandy and then they moved to london later they settled down at cambridge where toru attended special lectures for women there she met mary martin who remained her best friend till the end of her life her days in britain at that time then her days in france that provided a kind of exposure multicultural exposure not only multilingual but multicultural exposure which is rare in 1873 the dutt family returned to their beloved home in calcutta toru's first poetic translations started appearing in the bengal magazine her journey to success had just begun when once again tragedy struck her sister oru also died of tb sweet oh sweet is thy memory my birth place hidden greenery my sister how the days seemed fair when me first breathe of france the liberal air down there perhaps to counter the grief the agony of losing her own sister she started learning sanskrit from a pandit within 9 months she learned so much sanskrit that she was able to translate rather poetically translate episodes from bhagavat and vishnu puran she could use bengali she could use she could read sanskrit uh, but more importantly she used english language uh, almost like a first language she used french language she knew german and she was a great reader even she used to call herself a bookworm she had read almost 500 books in the last 4 years of her life and among those 500 books it was not simply some thin volumes of poetry or anything there was the les miserables of victor hugo there was the complete plays of shakespeare and that means 35 dramas of shakespeare only and toru's first collection of translation from of french poetry which is titled a sheaf gleaned in french fields uh it was first published in calcutta in 1876 and it made her an instant celebrity the renowned critic admund goes reviewed her book in the examiner he called it an amazing feat no british writer no no i mean no other writer had done any kind of this massive translation from a uh, french poetry into english during all this time she was in constant contact with mary martin their friendship became stronger through a regular exchange of letters as toru was greatly impressed by the grandeur and scope of sanskrit literature she made poetic translations of some immortal episodes from sanskrit classics poems she wrote and uh, which are now part of the ancient ballads uh, that can be described as the first uh, flowering of anglo indian poetry they are still considered as masterpieces of indo anglian writing admund goes wrote the preface but posthumously